Hey everybody, welcome back to another uh, test of a problem for you. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be talking all about block shear. Uh, so this is going to be just a little example, but I think it gets the point across quite nicely. And if you're still not following along and you have more questions or want to do more advanced block shear problems, there's, there's a lot of different cases that you can go over. Um, just leave a comment below and I can throw another example up that shows a little different uh, design that we can walk through. But for today, uh, I hope you like what I have here. Uh, let's get started. Um, or what we're gonna be doing today is computing the block shear strength uh, of a tension member. And I'm gonna draw that out now. Okay, so this is a steel angle. This is an L three and a half by three and a half by three eighths. Fy equals 36 KSI. It's going to be an A36. That means Fu is going to be 58 KSI. And you can find these values based on typical L section. If we go to our AISC steel manual and we go to our material grades, which are on table 2-4, um, we can see that the minimum yield stress of a, um, of a typical L section is 36 KSI, and the tensile stress, uh, Fu, is uh, at a minimum of 50 KSI, or 58 KSI. So that's where we get those values. And that's pretty typical in the engineering world, um, at least in the professional world, um, getting uh, any type of steel angles, you're usually always dealing with uh, A36 steel. We want to know the block shear strength of this member. And what that means is if we were to put some load P here, um, how much capacity does our connection have in block shear? Um, so this would be your block shear path. Okay, so we have everything, and then this is going to be connected by three seven eighths inch diameter A325 volts. And what's going to be happening, give you guys an understanding. So we're going to be having these two scenarios here. You're going to have shearing um, along the top plane there, along the three volts, and then you're going to have some type of tension failure uh, on the back portion of that, uh, of that block. And again, this is where I talk about depending on your bolt configuration, number of bolts patterns, you can have a lot of different modes of failure and a lot of different paths, which um, change up the shear values, the tension values. So it's definitely a case by case scenario. We'll denote shearing in red. So you're gonna get shearing along that plane. And again, up top. And because of where your bolts are, you can't, rely on that area um, because there is no steel plate there to um, get any shear value from. And then you have the tension zone denoted in green. Okay, so that's what we're working with. So we got tension green, we got shear in red. I think that'll help out quite a bit as we move through here. So first thing we need to do as denoted by uh, AISC Block shear can be calculated um, and shows the equations to get there um, in actually in chapter J. So J4, we have the equations for strength of elements in shear as well as strength of, strength of elements in tension. Um, and it's a combination of those two things that then create your block shear strength equation. But I'm going to be writing those out here. So you can still follow along, but if you're wondering where these equations have to be coming from, um, they're directly in your steel manual at those uh, locations. So equations come from AISC 14th edition chapter J4. So that's where all those will live. You're going to want to head there and take a look. Um, it might be easier for you to follow along if you do that. Um, but I'm going to keep moving forward. So first thing we want to do go with red is we want to know our shear area 
We'll denote that by A, G, V, because that's our gross shear area, which equals 3 eighths. 3 eighths is the thickness of our L section. That's multiplied by 7.5 inches. 7.5 inches. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit so we follow along. 7.5 is total length there so that gives you the area of the surface area that's being sheared off is the thickness times that length um, so that's gross so that's if just it was pure steel and there's no bolt holes and you'll see why that'll come in handy later so that's 2.813 inches squared now we want to know a and v which is the net uh, area uh, uh, in shear, experiencing shear forces. So that is 3 eighths. And by net, I mean you have to take your gross and now you need to subtract those um, those bolt holes. So 3 eighths, thickness of the plate, times 7.5 inches. That's the gross length. Now you need to subtract your bolt holes. You have 2.5 bolt holes. 1, 2, and then you have, whoop, you have 1 half. So two and a half bolt holes. Each bolt hole is is a diameter uh, of the bolt called out, so seven eighths plus one sixteenth inch on each side of the bolt. So that's an extra one eighth inch, and that is typical in the industry. So each bolt hole is one eighth inch bigger than the bolt specified, the diameter of the bolt specified. So that's where that comes from. So that gets you your net shear area, 1.875 inches squared. Now, shear's out of the way. Let's switch over to tension area. That'll be denoted A N T. So this is your net tensile area. Again, we did it for shear, so let's do it here. So that is 1.5 inches gross. So A N T is going to equal Again, the thickness of our member times 1.5 inches, that's the gross length um, experiencing tensile forces, minus, because this is our net tensile area, 0 0.5, because there's only one half of a bolt hole. That's just in that top corner there. That's kind of right, right there. Um, so one half of a bolt hole. And again, that bolt hole is still 7 eighths inch diameter plus an extra eighth inch. That equals 0 0.375 inches squared. Now that we have those values, now we can calculate our block shear strength. So the equation is VRN equals V 0 0.6 FU ANV plus U B S F U A N T needs to be less than or equal to V and that V goes around there but V of 0 0.6 F Y A G V plus U B S F U A N T. So what are our knowns? We know Fy equals 36 KSI. We know Fu equals 58 KSI. Talked about before. Phi for shear rupture equal to 0 0.75 for LRFD. So this one will do LRFD. And the last thing we need is you're like, what the heck is UBS? There's a note in chapter J uh, under that section that I noted before that says where the tension stress is uniform UBS equals 1, where the tension stress is non-uniform, UBS equals 0 0.5. So in our case, UBS equals 1.0. The tensile stress is uniform um, across that part of the, uh, of the steel angle. But they do give in the steel manual, and I had to go digging for this, but on the 14th edition, on page 16.1-412 in the commentary, it gives you connection criteria where UBS equals 
and UBS equals 0 0.5. So it gives it gives visual examples. Uh, so highly suggest going and checking that out. That helps to wrap your brain around what they're talking about. Um, but for our case, we have 1.0. So we're going to plug all that in. And what that gets us is 87 kips for that condition and 82.5 kips for that condition. And we see here that this is not true. So, oh, excuse me, these are B not applied yet. Not yet, not yet. So, hang on a second. So, that means that VRN equals 0 0.75, 82.5 kip. It gets us 61.9 kips. So that right there is the money um, because that tells us, so that is the block shear strength of our tension member based on the connection condition that we have. That's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I used a little color in this one. I hope that helped out to distinguish between tension zones and shear zones. Um, but as always, like, um, I'd love it if you would subscribe. That way uh, you get updated with new videos that uh, I'm coming out with, new content, and really just hopefully I'm doing a problem that you catch and you're like, hey, I actually need help on that and I don't know what I'm doing. So I always want to make sure you're in the know uh, and get the info that you need. I'm here for you and I want to leave this channel just for learning, just for you guys. So. Um, any contribution in any way, even if it's just um, a comment on my video, that would be totally fantastic. So thanks. Until next time, see you guys.